Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how you can save animation clips for later inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 by using power bends. So the idea here is that if you bring something like an image into a Resolve project and you animate it around the screen, probably with some key framing, then that's going to take some effort and you might want to recreate the exact same results. So power bends allow you to share materials between projects very easily. Whenever you have the power bin over here, you can click on master or any other sub bins inside of here. And those files will be seen in every project on the same computer. So first off, there's a good chance you don't actually see the power bins over there because you have to open it up. And the way you see power bins is you go to the view menu and then you scroll down here to the bottom where right next to show smart power bins, you'll have show power bins as a check mark underneath it. So once you check that, you'll be able to see power bins master. You can click on the master and see any materials inside of here, just like the master bin inside of your project. Now you can't have anything go inside of a power bin. So if we right click on the Wolf PNG in the timeline, you can see at the top here, you can create compound clips, fusion clips and VFX connect clips from the materials in your timeline already been working on. Now these types don't actually fit inside of a power bin, unfortunately, but you don't necessarily need that. In fact, you can just animate a clip or an image on your timeline, which we can do really quickly here, and then move it directly into the power bends master. And it will actually keep the animation keyframes for your other projects. So for instance, if I go to frame zero here on this clip, let's take the zoom and cut it down to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to go over to the right in the inspector, click on the keyframe diamond to set a keyframe point. Let's go one second in, and then I'll set another value for the zoom 1.0. Let's shorten the clip to two seconds. We don't really need it to be any longer than that for this tutorial. And then let's go to the end here. I'll click on the clip and then let's set the zoom back to 0 0.5. So it's going to zoom in and then zoom out. Let's show what that looks like. I'm going to hit play. Okay, we have our zoom in, zoom out. Really simple animation. So if we want to save that for another project, all we need to do is drag this Wolf PNG clip in the timeline straight into the power bin. So you're going to left click, hold on the clip, and then drag it into the power bends master, and it'll show up here. So now we can take this Wolf PNG into another project. So let's just jump into a different project here. Okay, and in this project, we can click on master for the power bends, and you'll see the Wolf PNG is still here. So I can drag this left click into the project. And let's go to the start of this clip, hit space to play. And you can see the animation still is working there. Okay, so back in the original project, we can still see in the power bin, the Wolf PNG is right there. Let's add a apple to the timeline so that we have two clips that we are working on. And let's adjust the settings of the apple. I have it positioned over here on the right. Let's keyframe the position, go about a second further, keyframe it to be up a second further and have it come back down here to the ground. So there we go, another really simple animation. Let's imagine that we wanted to combine these two as a single effect. Your first instinct might be to select both of them and then to create a new composition clip, give it a name, I'll call it Apple Wolf. So now those animations are actually combined into one clip that we can move around the timeline. But as I mentioned before, you can't take a composition clip and put it into the power bin. It doesn't support composition clips or fusion clips. So the solution when we want to combine multiple elements into one, but also put it in the power bin, is going to be to create a fusion composition and then save it into the power bin. So to do that, we open up the effects window if it's not already, go down to toolbox and search for fusion, and you should be able to find fusion composition. So let's drop one into the timeline over here to the right, and let's go to the fusion page with that selected. So a fusion composition by default is just going to have a media out, nothing else. And so we'll build out a node graph in order to create our final effect, which we can load into other projects. So let's close the clips window to make a little bit more space. And let's add in the apple and the wolf onto the node graph. So we don't want to bring it directly from the media pool because that is a reference which only exists in our project. So rather we want to link the files directly on the computer. So I'm going to right click, go to add tool IO, and then this will let you choose a location on your computer. So I'm going to grab the Apple PNG. I'm going to right click add tool IO loader, and let's grab the wolf.png. So the advantage to this is that these nodes 
are storing a reference to a location on the computer. So it doesn't have anything to do with this video project directly. But that's also a double-edged sword because if these files go missing on the computer, then it's going to lose the reference to them. Uh, you can go and change the location later or re-add them back in, uh, just like you would be able to with a normal video clip that's just referenced in your project. But if you just open up a project, you're not going to get that visual indicator where you see item missing over here because we're not storing the reference to it in the media pool. So you just have to be aware of that. If you want to store graphics for long-term use like this, I'd recommend you have a place that you're going to put them semi-permanently. So just keep that in mind. So with these nodes, uh, let's click on them and then click on the little view preview circle and let's preview the wolf as well. You can click on the nodes and you'll see in the inspector, they don't have any settings for controlling the position of the items in the nodes. The other problem we can see if we connect one of these import loaders to the media out, and I show the media out over here, is that the final frame is going to be the size of the image, but we want it to actually be more like the size of our video timeline uh, so that we can take advantage of all this extra space. So one way to kind of achieve that is to add a background node, which will have the video frame size matching our timeline resolution. So let's right click on the node graph, add a tool, go down to generator, background, and let's add this into a merge node. So I'm going to right click, add tool, composite merge. And the background needs to be the background of this merge node. And going into the foreground of the merge node, which is what sits on top of the background, we're going to have a combination of these two nodes. So before we do that, let's add a transform node to these and then another merge node. Uh, to get the other merge node, I'll select this control C, control V. Okay, so that just creates a copy. Now let's add in the transform nodes, right click, add tool, transform, transform. And I'll copy that down here. So we have a second transform node. So connect the apple to the transform, wolf to the second transform, and then add them to the merge node. Uh, whichever one is the background is going to show behind the other one. So if you want the apple to show on top, make sure the apple is the green connector and the wolf would be the orange connector. And then we take this merge and we feed it to the foreground of the original background merge node. And this goes to the media output. So that's a few steps. You can just kind of copy what you see on screen. Two merges, a background, two transforms. Now with this background node, we're not actually trying to add a background. So take the alpha and set it to zero. That'll make it completely transparent, but still giving us the final frame size of 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is my timeline resolution. And that's what we want to see in the output. Uh, otherwise, if you don't do this, what might happen is that as you're trying to animate, assuming that the output frame is going to be as big as this, uh, you might get cropping since the wolf image is not as big as you can see, 1050 by 1600 pixels as the timeline frame. So if we do animation here and we try to move it out of the frame, it won't be visible in the final media out. So now looking at our media out, we can kind of use this plus the transform nodes to figure out how we want to animate it. So I'll take the transform one for the apple. Let's shrink it down. Let's take the transform for the wolf, shrink it as well. Let's move the apple over to the left. And if you want, you can use these gizmos on screen as well. They're pretty handy. So as long as you have the transform node selected, you can position it where you need it to be. So for the wolf, let's go to frame zero here and let's keyframe, let's say the angle. I'll go to frame 30 and let's have it negative 360 degrees to give it a full spin. If you hit enter, the second keyframe is created automatically. So we go to frame zero now and we hit play. We can see our wolf does a spin. So let's now do something for the apple. I'll go to frame zero. Let's keyframe the position of the apple there. Now let's go to frame 30. And you can either adjust the center X, center Y positions in the inspector, or you can use the gizmos. So I'm going to use the gizmos and just pull this up here. You'll see that a uh, path is created showing where it goes between the first frame and the current frame. So that's pretty helpful. Uh, we can also go to frame 60 now, move it again down to the right. Keyframe created automatically as long as you have one keyframe set. So now if we go to frame zero, hit space, the apple's going to have an animation and the wolf's going to have an animation as well. And if you want to play around with the timing between the keyframes, you can use the spline editor to do that for something like the displacement. You can see we got a linear path right here. So we could pull on these curve handles if we want to make the uh, animation a little less linear. So let's go to frame zero and hit space. And we can see that changes the animation a bit. 
I suggest if you don't want a linear animation, but something a little different. Okay, so now we have our ridiculous animation. If we want, uh, we can go a little further than this, add in a title. So I, I'll just click on a text plus node. Then let's add in another merge, just copy and pasting the other one. So I'll connect the apple and the wolf to be the foreground here, the text plus to be the background, and I'll connect this into merge one. Let's give some text to the title. I'll call it power bends. Let's move its position. And then I'll go to frame zero, keyframe the size. Frame 30, make it a little bit bigger. Let's put 1.2 in there, manually typed, since the max in the slider is 1.0. And then let's bring the size back down to 1.0. So our text is a little bit animated. So we have some text, we have an apple, we have a wolf. That's all one composition. So now let's take this to the power bin. In the edit page, we can just left click on our fusion composition and drag it straight into the power bin master. So you'll see it's now sitting inside of here. If you want to rename it, click on the fusion composition, get the orange box and then left click on the name. And I'll call this wolf spin with Apple. So now if we were to take this into another project, what it's going to be really doing is just putting a copy of this fusion composition, wherever we put it onto the timeline. So let's go to another project. I'm going to go file project manager, open up another project, go to the power bin master, and let's drag this fusion composition onto the timeline. We go there, hit play, and you can see we have our animation with all of the stuff brought into another project. So at this point, anytime I want to use this in the future, I just need to drag it from the power bin master onto the timeline. And it's basically as good as copy and pasting from the same project further on into the timeline with control C, control V paste. So that in a nutshell is how you can reuse your edited clips and animations inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 by using power bins in order to do so. Worth noting any other resources that you wanna always have available between your projects, you can also stick in the power bin. So if there's a sound effect or something that you always wanna be able to see, you can add them right in. You can right click and create sub bins like sound effects if you want it to be a little bit more organized and then put stuff in there. But yeah, that's basically the gist of power bins, reusable assets between your projects. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end. I hope this video was helpful for everyone. And I will see all of you in my future video content.